Hey everyone, Steve Monet here with another video in my Bible Prophecy Bite series where we look at Bible scripture, history, and current events that all point to the soon return of Jesus the Messiah. Okay, so for today's video, I'm going to continue talking about the Mark of the Beast. Uh, in all honesty, I had hoped that I could have moved on to a different subject uh, by now, but this situation is getting worse by the day all across the globe. Uh, and even more troubling to me, and probably the reason I decided to make this video, is that there are a very large number of pastors that insist that this is not the mark of the beast. Um, I even have you know, some friends who are convinced that these mandates are not the mark, but a prelude to the mark of some sort. Um, I even saw a video recently of a well-known uh, YouTube uh, prophecy teacher who states that this can't be the mark because 100% of the globe is not affected yet. So if I use that logic, if we only get to 90% of the globe, then it can't possibly be the mark. It just it doesn't make sense to me. And of course, I still continue to have people tell me that it can't possibly be the mark of the beast because, well, people are getting snake bites in the arm and not in the hand or the forehead. Of course, I try to refer them to my old videos um, where I explain what the mark is and just never goes <laughs> never goes well I guess but uh, anyway what I want to do today again is to use scripture uh, different a different set of scriptures to prove that this is the mark okay and what I want to do this time is that I want to try and connect uh, all of the dots for you and I want to do that as I take you through history okay and what we're going to do is we're going to start in Daniel 2 then we're going to go to Daniel 7 and then Revelation 13 and then we're going to ultimately end up to where we are today. And then I will briefly talk, uh, uh, actually I'll expound a little bit on this earth beast of Revelation 13. So guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This video is, is definitely for the serious Bible prophecy student. And it's going to be packed with a ton of information. And I'm going to do it in a pretty short amount of time. My goal is to keep this again under you know, 10, 12 minutes. Um, some of you may find it boring, but uh, hopefully some of you get, get something out of it, okay? All right, here we go. In Daniel 2, we read that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream where he saw a statue. And then we read in Daniel 7 that Daniel had a dream where he saw four beasts rise up. And out of that fourth beast, a fifth beast will rise up that is comprised of ten kingdoms. And from that fifth beast and those ten kingdoms, a sixth kingdom shall rise. And that sixth kingdom is going to be different than the rest. The Bible tells us that. Okay. And this sixth kingdom shall speak great words against the Most High, God, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and to think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto his hand, a time and times and the dividing of time, okay, which is 1,260 years. So, first off, Nebuchadnezzar's statue and the four beasts with those ten horns and the two beasts of Revelation are essentially all of the same interpretation, okay? We know that the first beast, or head of gold, was Babylon. The second beast, or chest of silver, is Medo-Persia. Then the third beast, or the belly of brass, was the Grecan Empire. Okay? And then the fourth beast, or the iron legs, was the Roman Empire. Then the ten horns, or the ten toes, that came out of the Roman Empire was actually the Western Roman Empire. And you can do a search on the Western Roman Empire, and you'll find that it was comprised of the Ostrogoths, the Lombards, the Suave, the Vandals, the Hareli, the Visigoths, the Burdenians, the Alamini, the Franks, and the Anglo-Saxons. Okay? Any, any web uh, search engine will, will yield those results for you. Okay, But I want you so far to see how everything is directly connected with one another. Okay, All right, so let's keep going. And out of those ten kingdoms okay, that I just spoke of came another beast or a kingdom, that was different than the rest. The Bible makes that clear. That we know from history is the papal dynasty. 
and we have seen piles and piles of evidence that prove the papal dynasty spoke words against the Lord God himself and Jesus Christ. They changed the times of the Sabbath. They changed the Ten Commandments. And they changed numerous biblical laws. Okay? And of course, history tells us that the papal dynasty wore down or killed 60 million Christians over a period of 1,260 years. Okay? Now that kingdom, the papal dynasty that was defeated, the Bible says mortally wounded, that happened in 1798 by Napoleon when the papal dynasty lost all of its power. And then just as the Bible predicted again, the mortal wound was healed in 1929 when the papal dynasty came back to life. Now, if you look at Revelation 13, that first beast is the papal dynasty. It is identical to the beast of Daniel 7, 10 horns. Um, yeah, yeah, ten horns, uh, seven heads, ten horns. It's identical. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Sixteen years later, after that mortal wound was healed, okay, after that was healed, the United Nations was formed in June of 1945. This, I believe, is the earth beast of Revelation 11. And you want to know what? All of the members of the UN today are comprised of the Papal Dynasty and all of those members of the, of the Ten Kingdoms that came out of the Roman Empire. So they are all connected. Okay, And let's take this one step further. And of course, the earth beast has two horns, but speaks as a dragon. Guess what? The UN promotes peace all the time, but at the same time, speaks as a dragon when it comes to Israel, right? So there you have it. I've just connected all of the dots from Daniel 2, 7, and Revelation all the way up to today. And at present, there are 188 countries that are part of the United Nations or this earth beast. And guess what? As of today, September 7th, 2021, the following UN-based countries all over the globe have mandated snake bites. The United States has mandated all military personnel and federal employees. Russia has mandated all public-facing employees. The UK has mandated all nursing home workers. France has mandated all health care workers. Nigeria has mandated all persons that want to access their banking system or their houses of worship. Greece has mandated all health care workers. Turkme- I don't know if I'm saying this right. Turkmenistan and Indonesia have mandated all citizens. Israel mandated all citizens. Italy is in the process of issuing a mandate for uh, that to all citizens to be back um, snake bitten (laughs) by next month. So you see, and I, I would imagine that there's actually more. But as I showed you in my last video, the UN just released a 99 page document that provides guidance to all of these countries around the globe for starting a snake bite verification system. Does this snake bite prevent you from buying and selling? Absolutely it does. Many countries will not allow you access to restaurants, malls, grocery stores, unless you have this verification. And since these mandates are now going to be preventing us from working, we're not able to sell our own labor and or our skills. Are we seeing mandates apply to the rich and poor? Yeah, of course we are. Mandates apply to the United States as well as Nigeria. And I've never known Nigeria to be considered a rich country. And we're seeing this all apply, great and small, adults, children, everything, okay? It just doesn't stop. So I I want to just quickly play this two-minute video for you that's from um, Australia in the PM of the Victoria where he states that you cannot participate in the economy unless you are vaccinated. Watch. From a situation where to protect the health system, we've got everybody locked down. We're going to move to a situation where to protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. If you're making the choice not to get vaccinated, then you're making the wrong choice. 
you're making the wrong choice. And for safety's sake, and for the back to that point about how much work our nurses have to do, as this becomes absolutely a pandemic of the unvaccinated and we open everything up, it's not gonna be safe for people who are not vaccinated to be roaming around the place spreading the virus. That's what they'll be, that's what they'll be doing. So there's every reason, every reason uh, to get vaccinated. And there are appointments available and there'll be even more appointments available throughout September, October, November. Let's get to those thresholds as fast as we possibly can. But yes, there's gonna be a vaccinated uh, economy and you get to participate that, you get to participate in that if you are vaccinated. Now that's not right now, because of course there's many more people who want to get vaccinated than we actually can get through the system. But we're gonna to get to a point where everybody who can get vaccinated will have been offered the chance to do so. And we are not gonna have a situation, well, at least not in Victoria, where we lock the whole place down to protect people who won't protect themselves. These Go and get vaccinated. There's 11,000 AZ appointments available this week, 2,000 Pfizer appointments available this week. We'll have more to say with those additional stocks coming in from overseas, but I want to run that down to zero so there are no more AstraZeneca appointments, hopefully very soon, and we can order more and we can keep pushing that. I just again remind people, uh, the Prime Minister has written to everybody who's 60 and over and indicated to them that you are eligible for AstraZeneca. And if you want Pfizer, then you will be in the queue behind everyone else. That is to say, you'll be in the queue behind 12 year olds because they can only get Pfizer. That is that. All right, guys, so you know, <laughs> what other evidence do Christians need before they will believe that these mandates are the mark? I don't know. Uh, I, I've given so much, so much scriptural evidence that I just literally don't know what else to give at this point. Um, so with that, I'll cut it off from there and I'll stop. Until next video, keep looking up for our redemption draws near. Thanks for watching.